Look at that. Got some oil coming out. What's up, Finished Moto fans? Bill Wheeler here, Wheelhouse Garage. We are doing a bike and a beer episode today for the first time in a long time. We might need to change the name of this show to BSA and a beer because this year has just been full of BSAs. But here's two more amazing examples. This is a 1967 BSA Spitfire Mark III and this is a 1966 BSA 441 Victor. We're gonna have some beers, we're gonna talk about these bikes. I've done nothing with them, so you're gonna come with me on the journey of getting these things revived, running, and riding. But before all of that, here's a story on how these bikes got here. Started out as most of these adventures do, with a good Craigslist ad with some neat bikes and reasonable prices. And after a nice call with the owner and my dad willing to go down there and do the transaction, he hit the road southbound to a nice little town called Monterey, California on Super Bowl Sunday. When he got there, this is what he saw. And thankfully, these were under there. Really great bikes. We did a FaceTime call, checked the numbers and everything, and everything looked really good. So we did the deal. The bikes got in his van and headed back to his shop. He even washed them. Can you believe that? A week later, I met him at his shop to see the bikes and bring them back to my place. All right. Let's see what these bikes are all about. What's up, Dad? Hey, guys. How you doing? Good. How Good you to doing? see you. Good to see you. Come on in. Check her out. Look at that. Look at that. I think we got original paint here. I think it's all. Uh, there's, there's no reason to think it's not. I haven't been able to really pull off it. And the stickers are new. Let me replace the stickers. That's all right. Well, basically, I just wetted it down and gave it a little degreaser and stuff and wiped it down and not real big cleaner. It didn't go heavy on. But it sure cleaned up nice. Yeah, I think this is a newer seat. That's okay. It is a new seat, but I have the original seat pan. Are you serious? Yeah, and uh, it's only got one little tear. And actually, my guy can, my guy can fix that. Oh, I don't know, not man. tear, but a little separation. Oh, this is great. Otherwise, oh, it's there, but it's, it's the original pan. Yep. That and, is so uh, cool that he had this. Yeah. Though. Well, I had to go dig it out, and you know, he said, oh, I think I have it. I said, well, let's go look. Oh, yeah, we're going to look. <laughs> <laughs> that is it's such amazing. a score. I know, and the, guy, the guy's a smart guy. It wasn't like he, was, like he didn't know what he was had or was selling, but yeah. I think he just one of those moments where he just really wanted to move some equipment. He had a lot of bikes in his yeah. garage, and, and I think us being there first was the whole... Yes, you got to pick up the phone. Oh, thing, yeah, pick up the phone and then drive down there. I think that he appreciated that. He was ready for me. Yeah. Well, and what do we I, got I, here? I couldn't have done it without your commitment about you liking it. <laughs> Dude, this is original paint too. I know. I said it's original pipe. Of the, it's, it's all the, the original there. pipe. Oh, yeah. And it's a round barrel. Um, and it's a it's a custom round barrel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we, we noticed that in the pictures. But, you know, I didn't know. Right, so we got some broken fins here, which someone has done a nice job of, really of nice sanding. Job of this is going to go right in the garbage, and we'll put a new Amo on here. I'm really excited about this. I'm, I'm looking forward to riding it and riding it with you in the Triumph. And Dad, you scored. These Thanks, are awesome. Son. I can't wait to get them up to the shop, get and them on. After honest. I and checking on the bike and looking at it, I wouldn't have gone and bought it, but it, with that confidence, I was able to go in there and do it and get a deal, really, on both bikes. And meet a super nice guy, another, another enthusiast who was really excited and wants to see these bikes be ridden and that's really why he sold it. Really. While we're here, it'd be silly if we didn't go over some of the other, the other bikes. Okay. You, want, you want to show us some other this stuff? This is a 1939 Indian that uh, our prize possession, my prize possession, my favorite rider, my favorite, I want to get on a bike and go for a nice Sunday afternoon and uh, it works out, it runs and starts like a dream. There's a couple videos out there that you might see that it's a half a kick and it just wants to fire and run and it's smooth and it's powerful and it's just a pleasure. It takes you right back to 1939. Bye. Let's take a run from the 1930 Duddle to 500 single, real kind of special bike. This is a 1948 Moto Guzzi, one of my favorites from a couple years ago. We showed it last year at the Quail. Mommy, this is a 1929 uh, Douglas flat twin uh, racer, speed model, 500 race bike. Max's G50. Yeah, that's Alan's um, bike. 
1928 Rough Superior. Woo. Also a JD from 1928. And we just got picked this up at the Meekum Auction. 1929 R63 BMW. Some racing uh, uh, Dunstall racing BMWs. Uh, a Fuego winner of the Antique Show in 2019. And yeah. this is actually a bike you didn't see me buy at Meekum. That's right. This is the 1937 Indian. I went I went back in to say goodbye to my friends and saw the bike on the table. It had an amazing pedigree at, uh, that's been shown. And this is the original seat from 1937. It's, in, it's, a, it's probably, it's, the whole bike is original, but it's been restored, obviously. But that's the original seat. And uh, all the parts are there from uh, 1937. And it's a it's a beauty. So cool. Thanks for sharing, man. <laughs> well, it's a pleasure. <laughs> Let's load these things up. Right on. So that's how we got here. Special thanks to my dad for doing all the legwork to get these bikes in our hands. Appreciate you, man. All right, we're going to focus on this Mark III this week. So let's slide over here and crack open a cold one. For this bike, I picked this beer called Catch 23, which is a black rye IPA from Central Coast Brewing. I picked it because, well, it caught my eye. It's got a similar paint scheme, and also because it's called Catch 23, and this bike is quite a catch to say the least. Let's crack this open, see what it tastes like. Actually, you know what? I better get a glass because this is a black IPA. I'd like to see what it looks like. All right, back with a frosty cold glass, which I know will be frowned upon by my friends in the UK, but I don't know. We're in California. So let's see what this looks like. Oh man, it is dark. Look at that, it's pretty. Oh, black caramel. This is gonna be good. Look at that beauty right there. Man, I'm excited for this. All right, let's see what this bad boy's all about. Oh, that's nice. I'm glad we put it in a glass. This is the right way to enjoy a beer. You get the full experience. Well, you know me. I basically like everything, and this is no exception. This is delicious. It's creamy, smooth, beautiful beer. All right, it's time to talk about this astounding motorcycle in front of me. As I mentioned, this is a 1967 BSA Spitfire Mark III. This was the hot rod street bike, the fastest thing that BSA had at the time. Now, BSA only made this bike from 1966 to 1968, and they changed some pretty significant stuff on them every single year. But the foundation of the bike, the heart of the bike, remained the same, which is, of course, this BSA A65 motor. It's a 650 parallel twin. They bumped up the compression for this bike. These have forged aluminum connecting rods on them, and to make it lightweight, they put fiberglass tanks on for all three years of production. Also, to keep this bike lightweight and sporty, they put on aluminum shouldered Barani rims, which this bike is sporting. Let's talk about the things that they changed. When they first introduced this bike in 1966, it actually had Amol GP carburetors, which had a reputation for being finicky, and they also had velocity stacks mounted to them, which basically just let in a ton of air, which was great for, for performance, but caused some premature wear on the motor. Unfortunately for 66, they also had faulty ignition systems that were throwing out Maverick spark, unfortunately at the bottom of the compression stroke. That caused a lot of performance issues, some catastrophic issues, and just was kind of a misfire out of the gate, if you will. So in 1967, which is my favorite year, they introduced the concentric carburetors with air filters on there, which was a lot more practical for the everyday user. 67 also saw an upgrade to the head here. It became thin instead of that rounded egg-shaped one on the 66s. They also messed with the braking system. You can see here we've got the correct 190 millimeter front brake drum, single leading shoe. In 1968, the final year of production, they would introduce the twin leading shoe. Also, I don't think on, in 66 they had these. In 67, they introduced this adjustable Amol lever, which I am so thrilled that this bike still has. Also for 67, you got this sight window so you could check and adjust the timing with a strobe light. This bike is sporting its beautiful original paint, which will be preserved. The inside of this tank is gonna need some love. It looks like it was probably coated, or that could be the factory coat, but it has definitely failed. So that's gonna need to get cleaned out and recoated. I haven't checked it for any cracks or holes or splitting at the seams yet. So we're gonna give that a good inspection. But at this point, 
I'm going to take a sip of this wonderful beer. I think we've got a good feel for what this bike is. Let's go ahead and bring it into the garage, put it on the bench, see if this thing is going to fire up for us today. All right. What should we do first? I always like to check for spark because it's fun and it's kind of a good indicator if you're going to be successful or not. Um, I don't know how long this bike has been sitting, so I'll go ahead and open up the bottom of the crankcase and drain any oil that's wet sumped out of there. Um, I'll of course check the oil level in the oil bag too and see what it's looking like. See if we can move forward with the fluids that are currently in it. I don't really know the condition of the carburetors right now. They're probably gunked up, but it's not really going to hurt anything if we hook up that fuel bottle and see if we get lucky. So I'll probably do that as well. I'm not going to use the fiberglass tank on here today because I know that it needs attention. But yeah, let's see if we can make this thing make some noise. Okay, that one wasn't on. Oh, well, this is loose. Okay, that's not connected. I'll turn that key off. Let's see how much this battery is putting out. Yeah, 11.4. Not bad. I'm just in exploration mode right now. So I'm just going to. Clamp that down for a second so it's actually connected. Turn the key on. Oh, look at that. We got a little light. Okay, now we should be able to test for spark. Oh, yeah. Nice. I, think I should check the other side, too. Nice. All right, we got spark over here as well. That's great. Oil is looking here. Glow on the dipstick. Oh, there is oil in there. They're the clean. I don't think this oil is very used. So let's make sure there's not a ton down in there in the crankcase and we're probably good to leave that for now. I will change it later, but I just wanna see if this thing will run today. Actually, before I do that, I'm curious what ignition is in here. Wow, look at that. It's the original point. All right. So it looks like we've got some oil coming out and you can see the oil, well, I don't know if you can see it, but the oil is looking pretty darn fresh. So we're gonna be okay test running this with it today. Yeah, you can see that's barely used, if at all. We're just making sure there's not a ton of oil in there to be pushed around and put unnecessary pressure on uh, seals. We don't wanna blow anything out. That's my understanding of the necessity for this procedure after a bike's been sitting for a good amount of time. I'm going to go ahead and take it the rest of the way off because I just want to look in there, make sure we don't have any chunks of anything that have settled to the bottom before we give it a kick. Nothing weird. Looking good. All right. That's done. I can go ahead and top this off to the appropriate height capacity, I should say. Grab a rag here. Perfect. We're in business. Alrighty, the next thing I want to do is pop these fuel lines off since we're not going to use the fiberglass tank. There we go. I'm just going to see if I can Pull the one from that side over here. Put this little Y on there. This way I know both carbs are getting fuel for sure. Hey, that's a good sign. Two for two. And they don't appear to be leaking. Oh my goodness. All right, let's go ignition on. Nothing. 
Nothing. No signs of life so far. We'll keep it. How about half choke? No choke. All right, check spark. We got good spark. Nice big fat one. So we might have a just a fuel problem here, but I feel like if we tickle it a lot, we should at least get a a burp or something. Let's check compression. All right, so we're okay. On 50. All right, so compression's good. I took off the air filter so I could just see the choke working and everything. It looks good, slides are sliding up and down. We might just even not be lazy and clean these carbs out. But like I said, I would expect at least a burp or a fart or something. Okay, it's just a fuel problem. Yeah, it's just me being lazy. All right, I'm gonna take these carburetors off and clean them. <laughs> Got the carburetors back on. Go ahead and throw on the air filters and we'll be ready to give it another shot. All right, here we go again. Woo! Let's go, sorry, let's go with some choke. I didn't have a choke on. fire on the right side. Okay, we got this. Might be worthwhile to clean and check those points. See if I can get it to go one more time. Catch 23 from Central Coast Brewing. What a day. This was awesome. Thank you guys so much for joining me. We'll pick up next week. I've got still got work to do before we can take this thing on an awesome test ride. But I'll keep working on it. We'll go over that other bike next week. I'll see you next Saturday, folks. Cheers! Thanks so much for watching that video. Be sure to tune in every Saturday morning for more fun and adventures. There's over 30 motorcycles to check out on the Bike and a Beer series, and we now have t-shirts available for sale. Follow along for some epic adventures in the High Sierra on all types of rare and incredible motorcycles. 
There's a workshop element to this channel too, as I do a lot of my own mechanical work. I'll share all the tips and tricks I've learned, show you all the tools I use to get it done, and there'll be some exciting new products to promote as well. So join in every Saturday morning and don't forget to subscribe, like, and turn on notifications. Thanks.